Hi, I'm George Litterst, and I'd like to preface this performance with a little bit of an insight into the composition and the time in which it was written. The 1790s into the early 1800s was a remarkable period in the history and development of the early piano forte. Uh, in England and on the European continent, there was a rising class of affluent consumers who could afford to buy musical instruments and pay for teachers and purchase sheet music. And during this period of time, the pianoforte went from these very popular five octave instruments to five and a half, to six octaves, to six and a half. And of course, the composers kept up with this, these developments and continued to write music that took advantage of the extra notes and the additional features of the new instruments. And during this period, there was another phenomenon that was taking place, which was the emergence of a very popular dance form known as the waltz. Now the waltz was originally um, thought of as a somewhat scandalous dance form because it brought two dancing partners into close proximity with each other. But ultimately the emerging popularity of the waltz could not be suppressed. And it was, um, it really took Europe and England by storm during this time period. And to understand the piece we're about to play for you today, I'd like to call your attention to a passage in a book you may be familiar with, Men, Women, and Pianos, A Social History by Arthur Lesser. And he writes, I warn you, in albeit sexist terms, but it gives us some insight into the period. He states, waltzes were among the publisher's safest aids to staying in business, and they disliked being short of them. Under the Vienna circumstances of the early 1800s, any average young lady with a reasonable allowance of money might gaze at the display in a music shop window and feel impelled to enter and to buy a copy of any pianistic thought, however insipid, that was shaped in 3-4 or 3-8 time. And then Arthur Lesser goes on to describe a review that took place in the newspaper of a publication attributed to Muzio Clementi, published by the Viennese publisher Artaria. And it was a collection of waltzes, Opus 38. And the reviewer could not believe that these could have been pieces by Clementi himself, because, well, waltzes are low-level kinds of music. And Arthur Lesser goes on to say, um, alas, the critic did not understand that under Great Britain's glorious rays, Clementi had gone commercial, in a dignified way, of course, but with an unguarded moment or two. Now, in this period, not only was the piano expanding and the waltz becoming popular, but um, there was also an interest in rather exotic instruments, especially instruments from Turkey, the triangle and the tambourine. And in the case of tambourine, there were even books written on how to play it, and there were teachers who floated around who would give tambourine lessons. And especially young ladies were encouraged to, to take up the instrument. And many a composer during this period wrote waltzes for the pianoforte with optional accompaniment for triangle and tambourine. Uh, some of them were even called bacchanals, which suggests, uh, um, what should we say, a rather licentious uh, character to the, the music here, potentially. But in any case, uh, Clementi wrote two very popular uh, albums, uh, Opus 38 and Opus 39, which were uh, sets of 12 waltzes each with optional parts for tambourine and triangle. And I'm going to make room here on my music desk for my son Patrick, whom I've invited along with his virtual twin Pietro to uh, accompany me in this performance of Clementi's Waltz in C Major, Opus 38 and Number 9. Patrick, come on out. Patrick, don't be shy. Patrick, where's Pietro?
Thank you.